show about Robert Wedderburn. Mm -hmm. I had no mm -hmm. idea who he was. And when I found out that he was from mixed heritage, uh, Jamaican and Scottish, I was like, that is part of my heritage, being Jamaican and at the time I thought mainly English, but turns out that I'm got high percent Scottish in me as well. So it even brings it. Yeah, very bit, similar. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so I was very curious to know uh, what was it that got you into Robert Wedderburn? Did you always have this knowledge of black history in Britain or was there something that inspired you to start to inform yourself more about it? I suppose like a lot of people, it was Peter Fryer's book, Staying Power, that got me into it because there was a whole catalogue of people and events in that that I'd never heard of. Mm. So once you get into that, you realise there's a, a big gap that needs filling. So that got me interested in Robert Wedderburn. Also, obviously, my wife is black. And so that was another inspiration to actually do some more on that kind of history, which neither of us knew about, mm. basically. And I think that's, that's the thing for me is, um, like at school, when I, mm. when I just kind of drift over those memories, that try and pull them out of what happened in school, mm. I don't have any memories of doing anything with the black slave trade or black history or anything. And this is the 70s we're talking about. It's surprising, really, because usually people complain that all they did was the slave trade, and that's about all. So, you know, presenting black people as victims, and right. there was nothing positive to come out of it. And that's why we need far more, if you like, role models or people who achieve things who are either mixed race or black. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things I found was I didn't realize how visceral it is uh, as an inspiration to have somebody in this place of leadership or mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. that uh, is almost an, an image of yourself until I saw Barack Obama get yeah. um, become, the, become the president. Yeah, huge. And I felt this <laughs> amazing sense of almost loss that I didn't even realize that uh, unconsciously there was no image of somebody that represented my family and my, mm -hmm. uh, I suppose, my um, connection with any kind of political uh, shifting or changing of, of consciousness. Mm. Um, so that was huge for me. So Robert Wedderburn coming in, into my life has informed me that this has been going on for quite some time. Yes, yeah, certainly the mixed race issue as well is very important to us because we've got a mixed race daughter. And we originally wrote a book called Remember Me, which was raising a whole host of mixed-race people, past and present, for her to grow up with, if you like, to, mm. to know her history as mixed-race, to know where she stood and how she could answer questions about her identity and so on. So that was another spur, if you like, for us to look at uh, Robert Wedderburn. And it's interesting you say about identity, isn't it? Because this is what I'm also curious about. I was looking a little bit into um, uh, DNA structures and how our history is now developing mm. and the idea that um, science is saying at the moment we're all based from Africa and how we've spread out from that place and then how we've constructed race into four colors and I think I heard once there's something like 2,500 different shades of skin tone but we <laughs> put them into four. Yeah, yeah. That all happened in the 19th century, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> to justify colonialism and so on. But there's an interesting book come out recently by uh, a woman from America who's got Indian heritage and she's looked into the whole issue of migration. And what's interesting is she says every human being has been migrating ever since mm. time began. And not only do they start in Africa and then move out, they move back again. They didn't just move out and stop. So. We are nomadic We're, yeah, uh, um, people, yeah. yeah, human beings are migrants. Yeah, yeah. And they've it's, been migrating all over the world forever. And, and it never. strengths our DNA. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, that's right. it's a part of our, I suppose, of our genes want to strengthen themselves. They've got to integrate and move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is why I find it interesting. Cause the, the term mixed race, I've always taken it as, because um, when I was younger, it was like half caste or... Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and then mixed race is the one that is agreed on at the moment. But I have a slight problem with it because it emphasizes the race. idea of race. Well, I think the point there is that race doesn't exist biologically, mm. but it exists politically. Yes, yeah, constructed. We constructed exactly. race. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's why you still, I think, need to use the term mixed race. Yeah. That's the most acceptable one at the moment. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's what I, in conversation, I'm just, I suppose what's happening is I'm starting to question 
the actual the construction where the construction has come from mm. has come from the pain and the death and the oppression yeah and then our language is still holding that uh, even when it's done out of kindness and I find that interesting in itself that mm. uh, the contradiction of our language as it uh, it's like the blame is it blam blam what is it now? blame yeah. blame bammy yeah I've become, <laughs> I've become <laughs> there's, a, there's a brilliant <laughs> play that was on at the Theatre Royal in Stratford ridiculing that it was called The Gift I think okay and it was so funny it was really and there's a movement now to get rid of it isn't there I, I don't know yeah there's definitely um, BASA the um, Black and Asian Studies Association has got some movement now going on to actually get rid of the whole yeah. title because it's such a stupid it title. It feels just like an academic exercise. Yeah, it's like exactly. how you would summarise yeah. your paper yeah. into an acronym. Um, yeah, yeah um, that's right. And now humans are that. Let's just put them all into a little pot. <laughs> yeah, and then we can, right. It's like... A, yeah, it's, it's taken partition away. them off. Yes, yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah. So in what way did you find Robert Wedderburn out of all the, I suppose, the different political activists of that time? What was it that grabbed you, his story for you? Well, he was the first one. I mean, I've, we've done a lot of other books since on um, Caguano and Cafe and uh, more recently other West Indians that came over here like C.L.R. James and Leo well, Constantine. <laughs> oh, you have. And there's a whole host of these people that are coming out this uh, next month in our new book called Before Windrush. But I think it's also the time in the early 19th century which was a time of radical movement but of such oppression by the government. I mean you've got people like Shelley writing on Peterloo and recently you've got Mike Lee's film bringing that to to light again because a lot of people don't know about it. Yeah, yeah. How the, the, the cavalry just slaughtered innocent people in Manchester. And I think that radical movement that goes back so far needs to be better known now. I mean even in the Labour Party they don't actually stress a lot of the history of the Labour movement. People like Café who was one of the Chartist leaders. And so I think that whole emphasis on black historical figures needs to come into the school curriculum basically which is why we've read the written the books uh, with lots of illustrations that are accessible to people I mean mm. some people have complained that our books are uh, not academic enough they haven't got footnotes and all that but they're not meant to be for academic people they're meant to be for the ordinary people who want to learn more about black history basically and I think that's that's where uh, I, I I get excited that the that it is um, this history started to find its worth, float its way into mainstream mm. and be more accessible um, than, like you said, the academic world can be quite elitist yeah. and then you've just got only that information, mm -hmm. but it's the inspiration of everyone. These stories should be for everyone. And like when you listen to Robert Wedderburn, how he communicated through humour, through um, satire, through all the, he used mm. all these forms of communication yeah. to motivate people. And sometimes we then go academically, we put it in a box. So where's the motivation? Where's the connection mm. with the people that yeah. want to hear the stories? Yeah. And he was so inspiring, obviously, as a speaker, and so dangerous. That's why they put him in prison. I mean, they tried to put him in prison for um, sedition, I think, but the jury wouldn't wouldn't condemn him for that because they are sympathetic with his uh, political ideas but then they got him on blasphemy and uh, people were not so sure about that because they were still very much believers weren't they in God and so on. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it is interesting how he structures his religious um, sermons around his political uh, yeah. influence and mm. how he, he, he kind of moulds and blends them together to, to up, get an uprising. Yeah. And to free slaves, of course. This yes. is a period before slaves were freed, and he's writing in the 1820s, isn't he? And it wasn't until the 18, late 1830s that slaves were finally freed in the British Empire. Yeah, I think he's a great inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I think there should be a film made. Yes, yeah. About well, his life. I know a gentleman <laughs> that might be wanted to do that. So. Oh, yes. Somebody called Danny, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, I've yeah, heard yeah, of him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, hold, watch this space. Yeah, great. <laughs> well, thank you very much for, for sharing um, your how Robert Wedderburn has influenced your um, mm. uh, needs to connect black history into modern-day society. And uh, yeah. 
and I look forward to getting my head into some of your books and continue my education journey. Okay, you're welcome. Thanks very much.